Hi guys, welcome back to Snakes and Adders Reptile Advice. We've done a bunch of different reptile advice videos over the years, charting many different subjects, and they often start with the kernel, the acorn of an idea, and then I try and work upon that. And I was sat driving to work today thinking, hmm, rescuing, maybe I need to talk about that, revisit it. We've done some various videos regarding reptile rescue and rescue work and the rescue landscape over the years on the reptile advice playlist, but not necessarily discussed it recently. And 2022 is proving to be a bit of a bitch. Um, there are some pressures going on which are changing the landscape of rescuing that potentially are causing uh, problems and could put problems down the line for us. Equally, there is an element of scapegoating reptiles as well as energy consuming reptiles with the climate as it is with the cost of energy increasing the way it has. Our reptiles uh, getting the shitty end of the stick and that's the thing that I sort of want to discuss and, and talk about. Uh, I've done some work with Sid at the FDH and been speaking to Chris at the National Centre for Reptile Welfare. And it's important to put certain things into context about the size of the issue. When it comes to rescuing, it is estimated that there are 10.8 million cats in the UK. 10.2 million dogs. And the Federation of British Herpetologists estimates that somewhere between 7 and 9 million reptiles are in captivity. So that makes reptiles the third largest land vertebrate group of pet in the UK. That's impressive. Um, we are a young hobby by comparison to dogs and cats by a large margin. Their history as pets goes back thousands of years um, for us most of our growth as a hobby has happened within the past half century um, and it's amazing that we've got to the stage that we are um, in such a short period of time and this proliferation of reptile keeping has led to all sorts of advancements that have improved the lives of captive reptiles now there is a huge amount of research and development that goes on into product design um, and what products are necessary for reptiles in the modern age to be kept correctly. And this could be research and development undertaken by Arcadia Reptile, Reptile Systems, um, Exoterra, Zoomed, uh, Gigantera, Microclimate, Habistat. All of these companies, the research and development product design and these leaps forward were only made possible by UK captive reptile keeping. We need to be proud of some of these brands who are now ambassadors worldwide for the reptile keeping hobby, such as Arcadia making massive inroads in both Australia and America. That's only possible because of us, because we keep. Without it, they would have never had the funding to undertake the research and development that now makes our, the lives of our captive reptiles so much better. That's, you know, those achievements are amazing. Most zoological institutions will use the same things that we have got in our own private homes to look after the animals at these zoos. They're not using some magical wizardry to keep these animals alive. You know, they're using Arcadia D3 bulbs and they're using microclimate control systems. They're using all this stuff. And that's something that we ought to be really proud of. Reptiles in the modern age are more suitable to the modern age. People are busy. They're working all the time. Historically, maybe a member of the household stayed at home. And somebody went out and did the work and any animals that were at home would be looked after the person who was there as part of the daily routine. But life's fast and hard and complex and now we're all grafting all the time and working. And these pets, these traditional companion animals, may not be as suitable to the modern era as they once were. Reptiles don't need walking twice a day. They don't need feeding twice a day. In the case of small caged mammals, they don't need cleaning out every five minutes because the ammonia and the smell of piss fill in a room, so they need to be kept fastidiously clean. In the case of snakes, we may only feed them once every two or three weeks. Their maintenance costs are 
a fraction of mammals. The cost with reptiles comes up front, almost like an aquarium where the majority of your equipment you're buying up front and that's your purchase price and then the maintenance really falls off markedly whereas with mammals with their consumption of food they're warm-blooded they're processing their food quicker they're producing waste quicker and and in far greater volume and they require things like exercise such as with dogs where you're taking them out two and three times a day this makes them a binding pet and in the modern age that's harder to negotiate we all lead busy lives reptiles lend themselves to the modern lifestyle because it's optional to handle them you don't have to you can just enjoy them within their enclosure and if you want to get them out you get them out on your terms when you have time when it's convenient and it's this convenience that has seen reptiles become such a success in the modern age to put in perspective the rescue landscape as it stands now in 2022 it's suggested that there are 1.1 million cats looking for homes. There is 670,000 dogs looking for homes, which is a travesty, it's terrible. And these are obviously filling up the RSPCA rescue centres and various uh, rescue, independent rescue centres around the country as well. To put that in perspective with their numbers of 10.8 and 10.2 million, you know, such as with cats, you're running at 10% need rescue or rehoming. Whereas with reptiles, we are 8 million taken as the average between the 7 and the 9 million reptiles being kept. And the National Centre for Reptile Welfare, which is our largest independent rescue and probably sets the benchmark for how rescues should be with the quality of enclosures and the onward care has i think chris posted a, uh, something the other day about uh, that they've passed the 1500 animal mark this year which is a new record for this time of year and obviously we're only in september and we've got to get to the end of december yet so it is going to be a bumpy year for the amount of animals that pass through the national center for reptile welfare and no doubt this is reflected across the independent rescue network of the uk um but we don't have any other major major rescues and i don't mean that disparagingly the independent rescue network is an important tool but your size means that you may be limited to between 10 and 50 animals. Um, there is another rescue, which is the RSPCA Rescue Centre in Brighton, which is specialises in reptiles, uh, but that is smaller than the National Centre for Reptile Welfare. So if we know that, you know, there's, there's 1,500 animals this year that have passed through the NCRW, maybe 500 animals at, at, at uh, the RSPCA, and then maybe 50 rescues around the country that could take 50 animals or less. The total accountable amount of animals reptile wise looking for onwards homes is somewhere going to be somewhere between, it's a ballpark, it's not accurate, but between six and 10,000. Which when you consider 8 million kept, six and 10,000 seems like such small potatoes compared to the dog and cat conundrum. But we all feel it acutely because we're reptile lovers, we don't want anybody to be looking for a home. But it's important to put that element of perspective in there. When we talk about the rescue side and how serious it is and how worried we are and organisations are with the threats at play in the UK currently with regards to energy, inflation and everything else, the perspective is this is still a small, force, a far smaller issue than dogs and cats, but it's still a huge issue nonetheless, and it shouldn't be diminished simply by numbers. But I wanted to just give you an overview of maybe how the land lies. The majority of um, rescues or rehomes that we've had is roughly split. It's split between animals that have been surrendered and energy and cost have been nearly universally the the reason this year maybe in previous years other year, other reason, reasons would have applied that could have been the breakdown of relationship going to university whatever else uh, loss of interest um, 
and maybe a small element that is still is still at play now but the majority of what's coming through our door as a shop is um the the uh, animals that are being released because people feel that they cost too much to keep um and inflation currently is running depending on the report you read anyway between nine and thirteen percent which is making in real time our wages drop um and then obviously the impending energy issue which frustratingly i mean you know circumstances what with the loss of her, her royal highness queen elizabeth ii uh you know rest in peace um dying is overshadowed the announcement of liz truss about the electric where she's capping it now at two thousand five hundred pound which probably puts us i think at around 40p a kilowatt hour um What's my train of thought? The electric and the inflation that they're, they're creating the issue, and what it's doing is creating a, um, a panic, a reaction. Oh God, I can't cope. Um, and people are trying to maybe get ahead of the curve. I don't know. I don't know what the motivation is. But we've been busily trying to produce costings. Snakes and adders has been well. We were the first ones to do it. Other places have uh, used. The things that we've produced to create their own data sets including the federation of british herpetologists and arcadia reptile and leopard gecko youtube which i'm perfectly happy with and i have no issue with um but we wanted to look at it i was sat and i was thinking oh christ how much does it actually cost is there any is there any sort of um you know accuracy to this this claim and it's amazing how cheap they are really you know they're not they're not huge energy consuming monsters there are animals that are a heavier burden than others if you keep a desert species that's running at 45 degrees celsius then it's common sense that if you if you're keeping a montane species it's going to keep less or you keep a uh, a temperate species it's going to use less that you know that's common sense as well as conflating that there was the lockdown there was the uh, pandemic People were at home, people had spare time. How many people have bought animals without fully committing to the idea of keeping the animal for life? So that's another conundrum. That's something else that we've got to think about and at least acknowledge as a potential reason that people would surrender their animals. They never really committed to it. Um, unlike me, you and everybody else within this hobby who are committed, want to keep the animals for life. Uh, absolutely 100% behind their the idea of keeping it's a way of life it's more than a hobby it you know it's just who we are um and we would rather lose a leg than give our animals up i mean this video was just really to sort of calm nerves about the energy crisis you know that we've we've had it capped now at 2500 pounds there is no point um in in panicking anymore yes things are more difficult than they were but they're not as difficult as they could have been we're not going to see the £3,500, £4,500, £5,000 per year energy bills that were quoted as coming down the pipe. It's now been capped at £2,500. It's not a best case scenario, but it's as good as it's going to fucking get. So we need to just take a breath. At its current trajectory, the National Centre for Reptile Welfare runs the very real risk of being overwhelmed by people that are making knee-jerk reactions about energy costs. Um, and whilst Chris is, is quick to say we've not really seen the energy being cited as yet, more inflationary costs, costs of care have gone up. With the data that he's posted, the cost of care has been cited a lot more this year than it was last year. That trajectory won't change. And we need to try and at least protect our rescue network whether it's the ncrw whether it's the rspcr whether it's the private rescue network who are all creaking at the seams with the amount of animals they've got which is why we've introduced rehome wednesdays this is a double-edged sword for us at snakes and adders bearing in mind that we are a business we sell reptiles um that's what i do that's how i put food on the table how i feed my family Rightly or wrongly, I'm sure you've got an opinion either way, but that's what I do. It's what I've done for 20 years. I feel a certain sense of responsibility to reptiles. Um, they have paid for my way in life. They've paid for uh, holidays, put clothes on my kids' back, all the rest of it. So when I know that there's a bunch of them out there needing to be rescued or rehomed, 
ethically it just doesn't sit right with me which is why we've decided to do what we do with rehome wednesdays where we share uh, animals that are available for rehoming from the reptile rescue network around the uk uh, we get nothing from this and in fact every animal that gets rehomed we're not selling uh, but then we're foregoing that that's just what you got to do if these animals are in need we've got to try and help them uh, it's going to be a funny time over the next 12 18 months bearing in mind that there is an independent reptile shop network around the uk that also uses energy and does not benefit from any sort of energy cap so spare a thought for the local independent shops that have put blood sweat tears heartache torment and everything else into running their shops uh to face prices that are escalating at a rate that is biblical this is the single largest threat to shops and to the hobby if it hadn't been curbed the hobby is probably insulated now because of the cap but to shops there's still a very real risk that they're not going to cap the electric effectively for business and as such a lot of very dedicated keepers and independent keepers are going to go to the wall and that's a real real shame i don't believe that we'll be one of them i think we're pretty well insulated and we're trying to do the best that we can to remain dynamic and move forward with the shop um so it's it's just it's 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 such a strange time uh being a shop owner there's a lot of nervous shop owners out there uh and we wanted to try and do something with the rescuing and the rehome Wednesdays to help to do our bit. I think that sometimes shops and quite rightly could be accused of not doing their bit and almost burying their head in the sand and pretending that the rescue issue isn't happening and it is. Therefore, there's nowhere else for them to go. If inflation isn't got a grip of, if people start to feel the bite, they will look to surrender their animals. And at which point, if the network is already full, there's nowhere for those animals to go. And the more serious this issue becomes, the more real, the very real risk of euthanasia and things is. We're reptile lovers, we're a nation of animal lovers, we can't really bring this to pass. We have an opportunity to try and encourage people to hold fast, hold steady, be sensible, don't panic really looking at the budgets of the house for electric make energy saving uh, choices where you can without necessarily sacrificing an animal that you've loved for the last three or four years maybe don't have that kebab you know uh, or sacrifice a night down the boozer because it's an animal it's a pet and as much as yeah okay the boozer is nice and it's a lifestyle and everything else they're an animal. They're a pet. You come back to it. You just keep circling back round to it. You know, you can't just discard them, give them up. It's, it's just not right. With things coming under control, we are going to hopefully see maybe just a let up in the pressure. And we need to try and see a let up in the pressure because simply we can't continue taking in the numbers that we have. Our shops come under increasing pressure with the amount of bearded dragons. Um, the, oh God, the, the amount of beardies. We've also had, you know, as much as, you know, people don't like discussing it, and it's certainly muted, animals are being dumped. They are being dumped. I know they're being dumped. Because we've had the animals brought into us running up roads, and in carrier bags, in back gardens. And that shit I've got no time for. You surrender an animal because you're feeling the pinch. Well, you're not going to get scorn from us. And realistically, any other shop's not going to give you scorn. It's not a judgment call. It's not when we get to, to cast scorn down upon you. Where there will be scorn cast down upon you is if you dump an animal. If you do that, you're a prick. Then uh, you need your head bashing in. Because it's a totally irresponsible thing to do. Um, hand them into a, a shop. Hand them into a rescue if you're in that position if there is any way that you can negotiate your household budget or your lifestyle choices to be able to keep your animal do so because better times will return this isn't going to be the way we are forever but this energy crisis has the potential through panic 
not necessarily informed decision to totally upend the hobby, overrun the rescue network and lead to euthanasia, possibly even mass euthanasia of animals that cannot find an onward home. We cannot bring that to pass, we cannot allow that to bear. So it is something that I'm appealing to you about. Uh, heartfelt, you know, I really don't want this to happen. I've had to search my soul. I've had a particularly testy relationship with Chris at the NCRW and potentially at times, well, definitely at times with the FBH as well. But I've recognised that there's a bigger thing at play than personal rivalries or grudges or whatever else. And I've tried to reach out with the olive branches, which is why I've been trying to help do this, just to try and bring some cohesiveness. And if I can bury the hatchet, and it was a big hatchet, um, then ev everybody can, or they should, for the greater good of the hobby, really. Um, doesn't mean everybody's got to be best friends, that we all trust each other implicitly. But there's a bigger thing at play, which is the welfare of the UK reptile hobby. And we need to try and do the very best to insulate it, protect it. We don't want to end up in the point where we have got six, 700,000 reptiles uh, in rescues, the same way that there's dogs, or 1.1 million cats. Because there simply isn't the infrastructure. The RSPCA aren't interested. They've got no interest in building infrastructure. They don't even want you keeping reptiles. If you think that you're, they're your friend as a reptile keeper, you are wrong. Dead wrong. Um, so, you know, there's nobody going to come and save your animal if you can't keep it. If the rescues are full, there's nowhere for it to go. If the shops are full, we are trading businesses. We need to try and stay as full as possible to make the shop as viable as possible to offer the most diverse stock list to encourage customers to come in. So by virtue of that, we don't have an abundance of free vivs to take in bearded dragons because you can't sacrifice your kebab. It, it, it just doesn't work. And that sounds harsh, and it's not supposed to be pithy, but there is a certain element of frustration just creeping in through the corner um, about, you know, has any sacrifice taken place to be able to keep the reptile, or is it just a, yeah, I don't want it. <sighs> And then I suppose you're asking the question, should they be keeping it in the first place? And the answer is probably no. The issue is that it's a circular argument. It keeps going round. And then you only want people that are devoted to keeping reptiles. Keeping reptiles. And it's a balancing act. But I hope it gave you food for thought. This is like the thought process. It's like a whirling tornado inside my head. And there's arguments going off left, right and centre. But the energy price thing is hopefully stabilised. Inflation, they said, has actually come down. 0.3, 0.4% from 10.2 to 9.8, I think it was, they said on LBC the other day. So that's a movement in the right step. It's, it's, it's baby steps, but it's something. And at this point, we have to just accept whatever we can get. Um, so let's just hunker down. Don't go dropping your reptiles willy nilly. Keep hold of them. We're all, you know, we're committed to this hobby. We're reptile lovers. We don't just give up on our pets. Uh, I'll see you again soon. Sorry for rambling and going on, but it's hard to get it all out in one go in a salient manner. And I don't really have any notes to go off. I'm just literally talking to the camera at this point. So I'll see you again soon with another video. Cheers.